Excellent. Who's doing your exhibition, Jim? Uh, we are partnering with different entities. Um, so this time it's the King Arts Complex. Um, cool. Next up will be Goodwill. Um, so Deborah Griffin and her team. Um, oh, good. Okay. So the only one, the only one that we curated and hung, and I'm really going to try and not do that again. <laughs> um, yeah. is, it was the Art United C Bus Film and Photography Show. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, we just it's, like you know, we don't have the we don't have the capacity. It's it's sort of fallen into my bucket, but. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Is Beth Kowalski still with Goodwill? I don't know if she is or not, but I just saw her this morning. I was out for a walk, and she was so oh. out. She was like, "Hi." Okay. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. I haven't talked to her for well since prior to COVID, and she was with Goodwill and Development for a while. I don't know, actually. Oh. I see her out walking her. She fosters dogs all the time. Too. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, yes. So we're waiting for two more um, commission members, Lewis. So we have a quorum. Diane, how is Rod enjoying retirement? <laughs> I think he likes it, but you know, he's, he's working at the museum one day a week. I did not know that. Yeah, so he's still, but you're retired, connected. right, Diane? Diane, you're retired too, right? Yes, as of uh, March. How yes. are you enjoying retirement? I think it. I re recommend it to everyone. <laughs> exactly. Heck yes. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. It's busy, but it's nice. Yeah, it's amazing how it's like it's you know the rule that nature abhors a vacuum applies to many things like the size of your purse and the and the and what goes on in your life right you've got a space that can get filled yeah exactly but i i actually um i i'm 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 exercising more and walking more and you know reading more which i love yeah yeah that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. I someone called me. Um Betsy was giving an update yesterday. It, and I I meant to text her and find out when is Mark's piece being installed in the short north? Do we have a date for that yet? Or was she talking about another project? Um assuming the shipping comes in on time, the trucks come in on time. The twenty second of June. So excited. Yeah. Yeah, really soon. Yes. I want to come down during the installation. It's going to be interesting. Hi, Josh and Amanda. Nice to see you. Hi. 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 And waiting for one more. Mariah. One yeah. Council um, commission member. Before we can get started. And if I should text her. Is Matthew going to be on today? Okay. He was, but he emailed um, 20 minutes ago and indicated he probably won't be able to make it. Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. Uh, we we may probably need Lisa to start too, since we're first up. Um, I know, she's not, I, I know she's not voting, but she she's our project manager. Let me see if I can text her really quickly. But if you have if you have opening business to do, of course, get, go get started. I'm having network problems. Who? Am I the only one having network problems? Just having network problems. Diane, you are? Me. Yeah. Oh. So if I have to move, I will. Don't worry. I'll deal with it. Okay. You could also, what I did to try and get rid of the echo that I seem to have when I'm on my computer 
is I called in on my phone and I okay. muted myself on screen. I can send you the phone information if you want to try that. Or is it the visual? That yeah, you're... that does. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. It's freezing every so often, but I think it'll be okay. So, Lori, okay. Lori, you are the are you the call in user that's listed too? I am. Okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. send, I'm gonna send Lisa a text real quick. Well, we may get started because we do have a quorum. So I suggest that we hit it. Is that all right with you, Lori? And Luis? Yeah, I can't yes. see everybody. So um, if you could ask. So who who do we have? We have Marine. Mary. Um, okay, we're waiting for Lisa. We'll have a quorum when we have Lisa. Oh, I thought we had one. Uh, Me, Marine, Mary. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure Lisa can can Lisa vote on these two projects up first. No, she can't. But okay. we need a quorum to start the meeting. So we'll be okay. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, okay, gotcha. Hello, Marshall. I just emailed Lisa with the hearing link in case she lost that. So her birthday is tomorrow, everybody, in case you didn't know. Lisa's birthday. Didn't you? Uh, so, uh, Shelby just joined a zoom link. <laughs> I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what that means. Let me see if I can reach her. Hmm. Yeah, Lisa's in the way. Lisa's, yeah. You connected with Lisa? Yeah, she's, she's trying Diane, now to, connected with Lisa? to get in. Okay. Yeah, she's trying to call in now. Okay. I don't know what this is really weird. Hmm. There she is. Hi, sorry, friends. Thank you, Lisa. Sorry about that. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Hi Lisa. Buddy. Hey, I think we're ready to roll. Lisa, do you have your camera on? Lisa, do you have your camera on? I'm trying to get it to turn on my phone. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. I'm not sure what's happening. It's not letting me start my video. There we go. I had to turn my phone. All right. There we are. Oh, yay. 
Here I am. Thank you. Okay. Louis, can I, Louis, can I start? Yeah. Uh, okay. let, let me do the uh, waiting to start slides. I guess we're starting, but let me just go through real quick. Um, so this is the Columbus Art Commission, and my name is Louis Taba. I'll be hosting. Uh, Lori Budger, of course, will be presenting. Um, attendees are muted upon entry. You will be unmuted as appropriate. The chair will call on participants to speak. If you have questions, you may send a message via WebEx chat to the host, which is me. Uh, you'll be required to have your video featured on if you are speaking. The meeting is being recorded. To access meeting materials, uh, you can go to the Art Commission website listed there. And comments received via WebEx chat will not be part of the official public record. Uh, so the meeting is about to start. Applicants and speakers, um, turn off your video at this time. Use the hidden control panel on WebEx to turn the video off, and staff will ask you to turn the video on prior to speaking. Uh, speaker slips are required to be submitted no more than two hours prior to virtual meeting. Um, and staff, do we have any speaker slips, Lord? No, we don't. Okay, so don't worry about that. And so uh, applicants and speakers, uh, the order of speak will be city staff will present application materials. The applicant will be sworn in and asked to present any additional materials. Registered speakers will be sworn in and provide three minutes to speak each and commissioners will discuss the case and ask questions if needed. That's all. That's great. <clears throat> all right, I'm calling to order. I'm Diane Nance, I'm chair of this commission. And um, I'll start with um, swearing in the commissioners. We have four today, <clears throat> myself, Mary Gray, um, Moran Vanderheiden, and Lisa McClymont. Um, Do you all swear to um, tell the truth and uh, at this meeting today? I swear. I swear. I do. Thank you. Um, the next business meeting will be Wednesday, June 9th at 8.30 a.m. on WebEx. We will have a hearing on June 16th at 3.30 on WebEx. Um, and I guess I have to, do I have to swear you in too, Lori and Lewis? Uh, yes, you need to swear in me and anyone wishing to speak before the commission during this okay. hearing. All right, if you're going to speak, um, I think you have to have your, um, video on to do the swearing in thing. So um, all of you who are going um, to speak, please um, agree that you're going to tell the Jamie truth. Can, Jamie needs to turn on her video. For mm -hmm. So ah, that Marcus and Jamie and Amanda, Caitlin and Marshall and Josh. Do y'all swear to tell um, the truth today? I do. I yes. swear. I swear. Thank yes. you. Thank you. All right. Um, so I've introduced us all, um, and I think we can move on with the um, approval of the minutes from the last meeting, March 17th. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions about that, those minutes, or would you move approval? I so move. A second. I second. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So moved. Thank you. And we'll jump right into new applications, Lori. Okay. Um, we are back for uh, more murals through the Deliver Black Dreams project that is. Um, Helping to be, be facilitated with the Greater Columbus Arts Council, they filed the application um, for these two mural projects. You may remember the first one um, featured art by our commissioner, Lisa McLymont, and that was over on Fifth Avenue. Um, and it seems to have been very well received. The uh, projects today are for um, Freebus Avenue with artist Marshall Shorts and Wilson Road with artists P. Shelby Harris Roseboro and Marcus William Billingsley. Um, 
Jamie Goldstein is here from the Columbus Art Commission and Lisa McLeimont is abstaining from voting on this uh, application. And I'd like to turn it over to them to describe the project. And could you also, um, all the materials have been uh, submitted and we have, Sam Lewis has control of them. If you just let us know, the first uh, one that we have loaded in is for Freebus. Um, so if you could help us go through that, let Lewis know when you want us to move forward. Um, Turn it over I, to you, Lisa. I just want Jamie, to, um, Lisa, yeah, real quick, I, um, either, either Lisa or I, but I, I just wanted to ask if the commissioners <laughs> would like any background. You heard that last fall, last fall when we came before you for the first mural, but I'm happy myself or Marsha or Lisa um, could answer questions about the background of the project for the Black Dreams and the effort as a whole. Um, but if not, then we can go straight to um, Lisa and the artists for the concepts themselves. Yeah, unless Lisa's Jamie muted unless, right now. Yeah, unless there Lisa's are muted. What? Unless there Lisa's are Lisa's muted. If she could unmute. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I um, uh, Jamie. Unless there are any major changes to the program, I think that um, we are pretty much aware of of the impetus of the program, the, the intention of the program, you've written it in the materials. So um, unless, there are, unless other commissioners want questions, which they can ask later, I think you can jump right in. Great, thanks. I will, I will mute myself again. So who's discussing it? Are you, are you doing it, Jamie? Are you gonna talk to us about Freebus and Wilson? Who is going to present? Those two projects, Jamie. I'm not sure that Lisa has unmuted yet. Well, Lee, actually, we have asked, we have asked the artists for both projects. Shelby had a conflict, but we've asked had the asked the artists for both projects to be here so that they could speak to the concepts from their perspectives. Um, so, if you're on if you're on Freebus, I'm going to turn it over to Marshall. Okay, great, great. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. Um, I'll be brief. Um, you know, uh, you're familiar with the Deliver Black Dreams, uh, you know, project and, and, and commitment already. So um, I, I think, you know, uh, everything I sort of put in the description is, is where the inspiration for this comes. Um, it is about, you know, sort of radical dreams and uh, radical ideas of you know, how we can all live together in the city. So um, it's an adaptation of a number of different quotes, but um, it, it is, so it really kind of comes down to, you know, having the courage to dream and having to, um, and having the courage to uh, create that dream in our city, um, which is, you know, seeing the dreams of everybody realizing in our whole city win. So, um, yeah, I pull inspiration from Barbara Ho Jones Hogu and in Emory Douglas um, and a host of other artists um, and designers who, who come to this space. Um, and so yeah, that's uh, sort of the inspiration behind this. And um, I don't know if you're looking for any specific details, um, but uh, I'm very happy to answer any questions. I have a question. Um, it, it actually is not about the art. I'm, I'm, the art is great. I, I'm so happy with the artists you've chosen for uh, both projects. Um, my, my, my question isn't really about the art. I, I wondered if the, because of the, um, the photographs that are taken to show us these sites, will the city commit to cleaning the debris, uh, overgrown trees, bushes, on the sites and um, to keeping those weeds down before you paint, which is necessary. And then as the summer goes along. Uh, yes, I can answer that. We are working very close to the Department of Public Service on, on that, on the site prep. So uh, just prior to the priming, <laughs> the sites will be cleaned of vegetation and, um, and uh, power washed uh to prepare the surface and then we are also we're also working um on what kind of schedule we can have for a a regular maintenance cleaning going forward for all of the sites 
the winter is the winter is particularly <laughs> tough on on murals with all the salt and stuff. So most likely these will those those cleaning times will be um, early in the, early in the spring. Thank you. I'm also assuming that there is some kind of a safety measure for while the artists are painting um, so that, you know, traffic will not be, you know, that won't we also, we're also working with the city on lane closures. Um, absolutely. In both cases, the, the closest inside lane to the painting area will be closed for Great. the duration. Thank you. Other commissioner questions? Um, Chairman Nance, I have a couple quick questions, just detail. Is it on the south retaining wall? Did I get that correctly? That is correct. On Freebus Avenue? Yes, okay. that's correct. And also, um, Chairman, I'd like to ask that each of these applications, because they were filed separately, they would be voted on separately. Okay. So there is an action request on the agenda. If you'd like me to read that, or if you want to read that, the motion, if a commissioner wants to read that. Sure, I can read it. Um, this is for Freebus currently, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if I don't have any other questions from the commission. Okay. Um, the motion for approval, I'd like a motion for the approval of the design and placement of the mural Dare to Dream, Dare to Win, as submitted on the south retaining wall along Freebus Avenue, close to 1780 Freebus and Alum Creek Drive per code 3115. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve. To approve. Thank you. I'll second. A second. Right. Any questions? In favor? Aye. Aye. I can't see you. So, Marine and Lisa, can you say your? Um, Aye, oh, Marine. Okay. And Lisa. Oh, you're All right. Well, three of four <laughs> is a quorum today, so um, that passes. Congratulations. I just have to say, this uh, graffiti seal, uh, that is a hell of a product. When did I, that come on the market? I call it, I call it the goop because yeah. it, this stuff is like something out of, out of Ghostbusters. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. crazy. Um, it is also non-sacrificial, so it can be cleaned um, without yes. destroying the surface. Um, it's, it's a pretty interesting, pretty interesting product. I don't know yeah, when it came on the market, but uh, yeah. uh, it's also it's also extremely expensive. Yes, it's sad when we're paying more for that than the artist fees, but you know, we we want longevity for these murals. Yeah, protecting the earth is also important. So it is absolutely. Yeah. Great project. All right. Um, can we talk about Wilson Road? Yes. <laughs> Marcus, uh, Shelby, Shelby, welcome. We're glad that you that you made it. Thanks so yeah. much. Shelby's with okay. Shelby and Marcus can. Yes. Uh, will, will Will someone be showing our our work? Will, will it be up presented? I think yeah, so. Leah, could you put up yeah. the Wilson Road file application? And Shelby, um, I have to swear you in. The others were already sworn in. Do you swear to tell the truth today? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, take it away, Marcus and Shelby. Uh, Shelby, do you want to go first? Do you want to talk about something first? Well, first, I'm so, what a great opportunity to work with you. And um, this has been, I'll, I'll just maybe just start and tell them the quote, and then you can tell them how we got to all the amazingness, OK? Sure. Um, but, Marcus and I are, first of all, two different types of artists. We have the same birthday and we are so much alike. But so we're so much of the same type of artist. So this has been like really an honor to work with him. And um, this particular mural, um, when you when you see it, uh, we were inspired by a Faith Ringel quote 
Um, you can sit around and wait for somebody to tell you who you are. You just, yes. She said, or, I'm sorry, you can't sit around and wait for somebody to tell you who you are. You need to write it and paint it and do it. So that's a Faith Ringgold quote that we were inspired by. And then we started to um, just talk about our two styles and how to mesh them. And I think Marcus is better at explaining how we got to uh, the visuals. Sure. And, so. um, and I'm sorry, this, this is Lori. If you could tell Lewis where you want him to be. Uh, would you want to do the images now that he can see move? the picture? The images would be best, yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, so as Shelby said, when we came together and meshed pretty well together, we were we were on the same um, page as to what we wanted to depict and the information we wanted to include. We were both on the same page of um, depicting and creating an image for children. Um, I, think, I think that we were both uh, very, very intent on making something for the kids where um, Shelby was more on the side of um, providing actionary um, um, wording for, for children to follow throughout their lives, while my side was more um, depicting that and helping to envision our futures. Um, so one of the ways I, I like to depict these things is um, I'm a storyteller and I like to tell stories um, throughout all of my illustrations. Um, and one way I tell stories definitely about communities is by including pop culture um, and things that we all share um, within our communities. Um, so uh, uh, one of the things that I include in here was symbolism and some symbolism I, I like to include in my work is that of um, tarot cards. Because I believe tarot cards are very um, self fulfilling and all about manifestation. Um, so, so in my piece, I depicted two children who are basically manifesting their own de destiny um, under the light of tarot cards. So, so the two tarot cards that I am alluding to are that of um, Justice and the Magician. And these two cards, you guys can look it up in your free time. Um, but these two cards have a lot to deal with um, fairness, truth, law, uh, cause and effect, compassion, um, opportunity, creation, um, unlimited potential. And like I talked about earlier, um, converting converting energy to matter, like actually um, actualizing our, our dreams, our, you know, our the things we want in our lives. So that's where the symbolism in my imagery comes from. And uh, you know, I I threw in some some of the things that I know that I'm really good at, which is like clouds, and um, portraiture, uh, depicting people. So that's where all my my art comes from. <laughs> and then I like um, again, I was more inspired like with the Faith Ringle and the fact that she's a quilter. And so if you zoom in on the image, you see like a dashing kind of quilting style throughout the image to just incorporate. Um, more symbolic happiness and things around write it, paint it, do it. Um, so yeah, and then uh, I I think that it's a a good concept. I'm a little um, the the do it was underneath originally the um, bridge, and so that placement um, is kind of one of those things that I think we'll have to get in front of it to know exactly where it's gonna go. Um, but I remember we, um, you know, those are those are our keywords was write it, paint it, do it. And we'll just position, position that, do it in a way where um, you can still see it and it's not underneath uh, the bridge mm -hmm. uh, in a way that you miss it. And I, I, I did have something I wanted to say about that part of the bridge. Um, um, just talking about how that area is is very, very rough and dilapidated, but it's not the entire section underneath the bridge. And I think that um, uh, creatively, we wanted it to leave it open for for solution. You know, we didn't, mm -hmm. we weren't really sure if um, you know, like we could put something important there. Or as of right now, it's just a blank space. But I I would like to open it up for some creative thought as to to how to accomplish that space and make the entire piece still feel cohesive. Because that that um, I visited the spot and that um that that area is very very troublesome, um and it it greatly interrupts um, what we're trying to achieve here. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions then. Um, so um, I, even though you still will be working on that section, um, I don't see this. This is not a concept design. This is about the design. So um, do you foresee it changing drastically? In which case you, you kind of have to come back to see us. Mm -hmm. um, so how? So um, I'd like to respond to that because, yeah. okay. Um, <clears throat> so originally the right of painted do it, the do it was positioned underneath where you see that space yeah. is. And it was brought to our attention that, you know, um, that's gonna be a high area for damage or darkness, or, you know, it's gonna be a situation where it may need to be scooted to the right. In my opinion, this is a drastic scoot to the right. Now. I think that it's going to remain the same. I do not anticipate altering any designs here as far as stitching and concepts and objects and placement. Mm -hmm. and, um, okay. that, that is kind of where I think it's kind of a get in front of it. It's hard to show in this view of this image because of the way that the bridge is cutting sure. on the two photos. Um, so I almost wish uh, we could imagine breaking it into two perspectives um, where it's just going to be a distancing thing among the words. Um, and I think, yeah, thanks, Shelby. I think I think once it's actually on the wall, be able to create a better sense of continuity with those words there, um, like you just said. Um, the, you know, the other issue is not in all cases, but on a case by case basis, the space directly below the railroad trestle is not owned by the city. So, um, and, and we've had lots of conversations with public service about this. Um, it is owned by the railroad, uh -huh. and so and so what and so what we, what we part of the, in addition to the water leakage directly underneath the railroad trestle, um, the other consideration was keeping the design fairly minimal under that space. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even the city acknowledged that they they didn't think. If we painted it a private, you know, if we painted it our base color, that they're going to have any problem with it. Um, yeah. But we have just those few trailing little lines that help provide the continuity. And, and I do think, you know, the railroad trestle, it, it's really hard to get a sense of how wide it is in here. I think that when we get out on the site, those those three action phrases are going to be able to be balanced to look a little bit more cohesive than it presents in the design. Absolutely. That was my second question. I kind of knew that the city didn't own that section. And so you're saying that it's owned by the railroad. Has anyone spoken to the railroad? Do you have permission to work on that space? We uh, Did you have to get permission? To work? We, don't, we don't have to get permission. We have acknowledged that there is a small risk to be taken with this, but um, public service basically told us, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead with this and wait. And, we haven't encountered problems with the railroad before. What they're mostly concerned about, the railroad is mostly concerned about, is anything on the trestles themselves, right? Got it. Um, yeah. Um, so the the space underneath is not something they're monitoring, and but we are, but there are, but there are other sites around Columbus that we are, that we're sort of interested in, and so we're we are starting to try and make the inroads into having those conversations um, and establishing a, a more formal relationship with the, with those various entities. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions about this? Yeah. Hi, this is uh, Mary Gray. Um, when I first saw the concept, I, I, I appreciate all of these. When, when I read, write it, paint it, do it, um, I thought this is going to be really cool. People are going to get their spray cans out and they're going to follow what, they're going to look at that invitation and just do it. Um, have, you, have you considered that? <laughs> oh, Shelby, you're, you're muted. Have I considered? Okay with that. Yeah, have I considered them doing it directly to the wall? Absolutely. I have not considered that. Okay, because I looked at it and I thought, boy, if I can get myself some spray paint, and learn how to do it, I'm going to go over there and write my name. You rebel, but, you rebel, you. I, and I'm not. <laughs> That's the funny part. Um, so I don't know that I would be the only person having that fantasy of uh, being able to write 
and paint on it. I also wonder, you know, with the empty, with, with the relatively empty space under the railroad trestle, you know, um, yeah, I just adding to the same kind of thoughts. Well, it's, it's, interesting, so it's interesting to think about, um, you know, we, we really have no way of knowing how people are going to take this sort of, um, this, you know, call to action, um, and also part of why we are doing the anti graffiti coding. Right. And maybe, you know, I wonder too, maybe, maybe this is a part of the concept somehow, <laughs> you know, and if that were to be part of the concept, how would it be incorporated? Uh -huh. Okay, so my response to that would be, um, definitely never thought about the whole write it, paint it, do it thing because murals have always been a solution to the problem, you know, of vandalism. <laughs> so you bring up a great point. Um, and it's something, you know, to explore. I, I'd, I'd like, a, it's almost one of those things I'd wonder talking to Marcus even if, you know, if it's something that we should rethink, um, I'm open to that. But maybe we, you know, we look at the concept or say the entire quote, because originally I wanted to say the entire quote. And, um, you know, after thinking about the words of the quote and how many words it would take to say all those words to that quote, it was easier to shorten it to action words. And, um, but yeah, that's a interesting perspective. I, I, I'd like to just say, I think there's a space and time to invite people to interact with public art and, and murals like this are, are, are not it. I, I never, I, when I first saw this, that's not what my, my thinking was um, necessarily. And I, but I think it's an opportunity to have a conversation about why we pay professional artists to do big pieces of work. Um, and that they have a vision for a dream. And when we, when we create a community interaction project, it's not going to be in a space like this, which has no sidewalks. It's completely not pedestrian friendly. This is a drive by location. Um, and so I guess I would <clears throat> for I, I mean, I, I, I would be super open to exploring the idea of doing something like that for a public mural someplace. Um, I, I would be I would be hesitant to to encourage a change in the design in that direction for for this location specifically it's not it's not really safe for pedestrians um and it's not encouraging to pedestrians mm -hmm. and okay, i would expect you know. that jamie i i agree i you know i was thinking in terms of an engagement opportunity um you know something that could spin off from something like this but what if we had an activity at some other place or some place in the hilltop that spurred off of this quote and your thinking. Um, I mean, we have lots of visions for um, lots of visions for Deliver Black Dreams and its educational reach and into other sectors. And I think um, I think all of this opens up a really nice um, opportunity to think about how can we um, more deeply connect the community with the art that we will be creating. Okay. Um, let's let's uh, take a motion on the action that we're asked to do right now, um, and that is a motion for approval of the design and placement of the mural design, the inspiration, as submitted on the west retaining wall close to 590 Wilson Avenue by Fisher Road, for code 3115. I so uh, move the motion. Okay. All and those in favor? Have... Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Mary, I, Marine, yes. Yeah, okay. I said aye. All right, now we've approved it and there have not been any adjustments to that action. So what I would suggest um, is to make sure that you get in touch with Lori should you come up with some sort of um, design that is a lot different from what you're suggesting and what we've approved. Would you do that for us? Thank you. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, good luck. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, Thanks everyone. I promise I won't spray on it. <laughs> I'm not sure I trust you. <laughs>
I've known you too long. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Good to see you. Bye. All right. Okay. Lori. Hi. Um, could Caitlin, are you in now? Great. Um, so you may recall one of the first, might have been the first virtual um, hearing for the Art Commission uh, last spring, early summer, was Summer Spray uh, with the Short North Alliance. Caitlin uh, represented the project. Um, and I think I might have been um, talking through a phone to Diane and having it reverberate around. So we've come a long way <laughs> since that particular um, <laughs> mess. But um, so Caitlin is here to introduce a uh, second season of Summer Spray. The location is unchanged. It's that big barren concrete scape that's behind the High Street cap Street. just off of Goodale behind um, North High Street and or in between North High Street and West, or excuse me, North Park Street. Um, there's a, this is a conceptual review that, um, Caitlin is requesting. Uh, she intends to come back when they have the artist selected to, uh, go out and, um, again, extemporaneously, um, do the murals on weekends, one at a time. Um, and the public can come and talk with them and have some other, uh, perhaps public aspects to the project. So. Um, I'd like to turn this over to Caitlin and Caitlin, if you could direct Lewis um, through your PowerPoint, uh, you're all set to go. Sure. Thanks, Lori. Um, I think everyone can hear me. Um, Lewis, you can go on to the next slide. So, um, Lori, that was a, a great lead up. We are doing our next iteration of summer spray and 95% of all the project elements are remaining the same. The other 5%. We're tweaking to be better. So um, I think pretty much everybody on the call is familiar with the general idea of summer spray. Um, we have a blank canvas and a blank wall on the sometimes unsightly cap that we call it that ODOT owns that we go through them to get permission as well. Um, and we, we choose um, up to 10 artists to create a mural um, weekend by weekend. Um, in the summertime. Um, so last year, it was a really great success, even despite everything that was going on in the world. Um, it was fun for people to just uh, see them going up week by week. And this year, um, given the world has changed a bit, we're hoping to have a little bit more activations around it. So when the artists are out there painting weekend by weekend, um, that there's more people engaged watching um, and kind of coincide it with some other short north uh, events we have, such as gallery hop and, and those things. So um, if you can go to the next slide, Lewis. So just to refresh everybody's memory, um, it is in the same location as last time. It really takes up that south side, or excuse me, north side of the cap. Um, nothing changing with the overall wall, except Lewis, if you can go to the next slide. Um, we are just making it a little bit better um, so that the back isn't quite as unsightly as last year. So we'll be kind of making it a, a triangle of sorts. So not only um, people trash and stuff can't get back there, um, but it's also a little bit more stable so that it can't topple over. Um, same as last year, um, it will be primed beforehand for the artists. And your recommendation last year, which was an awesome one, was to have um, a, um, excuse me, a vinyl placed on the entire wall kind of weekend by weekend with the artist information. We're going to do that again, but also add just one additional panel so that one vinyl stays on there throughout the duration of the project. Because one thing we learned this year is when um, Hakeem went and we had to take down his vinyl, then people had a hard time placing, oh, who did this mural? So we'll keep a vinyl up through the duration of the project so people can easily reference who did which mural. Um, if you want to keep going, Lewis. Um, same, same guidelines as last year. We really want to make this what the artists want. So um, we had an orientation meeting last year with the selected artists, gave them the parameters, kind of told them the vision, um, and then they met with one another and they met with the people that were going to be painting side by side to them. And it was really interesting because the people 
um, Jen and Eric who started and Felicia who finished, they had conversations. It was just kind of a lot of um, really interesting artistic conversations to kind of how they wanted it to flow. And we really intend to do that same thing this year. So as, as Lori said, um, if it's still okay with you, kind of the same um, outline as before, we'll come to you with conceptual, i.e. this, see what you think, see if you have any feedback. Then we'll come back to you with our selected artists and, our, and examples of their work, um, but then really let them design and paint in the moment. Um, you can keep going, Lewis. Um, so we are increasing our artist stipend a little bit uh, this year. So every artist will get $1,000. Um, additionally, which, what is really neat with this iteration of Summer Spray is that each artist will also have a time and space to have their own exhibition in the short north. So we are working with, um, unfortunately, we have some vacant storefronts that have popped over, popped up over 2020. So we're working with some of those um, storefronts to utilize their space for art exhibitions. So um, let's just say artist one um, is able to do his summer spray, him, his or her summer spray mural. And then coinciding with that, they have an exhibition space where they'll be partnered with someone versed in that, be it a local Short North Gallery or someone of the sorts, to be able to curate that exhibition and put their work on display um, for, for a weekend, which is really neat. It'll be a differing weekend so that they don't, they're not responsible for painting their mural and holding an exhibition. Um, but it's going to be a neat opportunity for the artists to get that exposure um, in the short north simultaneously while they're creating this mural for summer spray. Um, you can keep on going. So our maintenance plan, um, obviously we have our short north ambassador teams that keep an eye on it. Um, we seal it um, at the end of the project. We had um, in this, the Deliver Black Dreams conversation that was happening before this. We had one of our artists do a really neat mural and it was kind of a, a, a word bubble, um, which was really neat, but I think it might have encouraged people to want to write in that word bubble. Um, so that was kind of the only issue we had and we worked with the artist to um, kind of touch up here and there. Um, we're hoping that's the case this year, um, but understanding that it's a, it, kind of a temporary installation. We are ready if, if for some reason, tragic, my dog is chewing on this phone very well. Me, I'm sorry. Um, if for some reason something drastic happens, um, we are prepared to remove if necessary what we need to remove. Um, but that would hopefully be worst case scenario. Um, if you wanna keep going with this. So as I briefly mentioned, this timeline's kind of hard to follow, but generally what I just said um, is, is easier to kind of fall on your mind. So an artist will have one weekend where they're creating and then one weekend where they have an exhibition. And we just kind of matched it um, based on on the exhibition versus the mural. This might change slightly once we choose artists and see their all of the availabilities and might have to kind of puzzle piece it together. But the main takeaway is um, the project will start August 7th. It will end October 16th. And every participating art artist will have a mural weekend and then a separate exhibition weekend. And I think that might be it. So does anyone have any questions? I would say, Caitlin, this is Marine. Mainly, um, I, I understand, you know, separating the, uh, for time reasons, separating the mural from the exhibition. But at the same time, I think it would be really wonderful if that was up at the same time. So if people would be walking around, let's say, and would be really responding to the mural, then they could go see the exhibition where they might even be able to purchase, for example, a work or something like that, which could be, you know, I, I think from a, yeah, from that kind of perspective, it would be really great to have it up at the same time. Yeah, and we can we can explore that a little bit more. Um, I also think that maybe there's an element where if someone else has their big shebang exhibition and then there's a portion for whoever's actually painting to be able to sell prints or whatever in kind of a, a quarter of their space, that could be neat. Um, but yes, I hear you. I'm already getting questions like, we just have Saturday. Is that all we have? Do we have Friday? So I know the artists like, 
um, want as much time to create as possible. But I think that to your point, that could be a really neat opportunity for them to have it happening simultaneously. So we'll explore that. And I really appreciate the addition of the vinyl, like the vinyl that stays up or the texts. Yeah, I think that is really smart. Yeah, that worked out really well. I think that was Lori's idea. So thank you. Lisa or Mary, any questions? Um, to Mariah's point, this is Lisa. I, um, while I love the idea as a working artist, I kind of get stressed out thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I actually wonder, is it possible to have a group show ahead of when they start painting? But that's me. Just throwing that out there. Or, or would it stress you out if we did, um, like a group sh if we had a group show at the end or is it just the fact that you have to, you have to do two things kind of you have to coordinate as an artist is it stressful that you have two things you're coordinating or stressful that they would overlap because um oh. if there was an opening maybe that is offset and they're showing through the month but i'm not sure what the format is with these galleries right. if they're showing for a weekend then i think that's not possible because most artists would want to have both days if they're available to paint just the mural and get it the way they want it. Um, but yeah, before or after a group show, I think shows them in mass and like shows them as a community as opposed to separate artists doing solo shows. The solo show sounds like a great idea. It just seems like a lot per artist to take on. We're hoping that with whoever we partnered with, um, so be it Margaret from Sherry Gallery, who does this a lot, like she, if they have the space, they come in, they feel really supported, they kind of know what pieces and somebody like Margaret can curate and help. And then I, me, I'll be running around kind of doing whatever needs to be done too, that maybe it's a little less stressful, but if for some reason that was a hindrance to the artists themselves and they were super stressed, we could tone it down. Only if they don't have the work stacked up ready to show, because that's right. coming up pretty fast. Right. So this is I'm Mary, I have a question. Also oh. it. I love that concept. Just throwing out some uh, alternate options to consider. I, and I'm not a visual artist, so, but that I appreciate that. Is there any, is there time in the schedule for the artists who are presenting to respond to this question? <laughs> you know, can, Good question. Can they be, I mean, can they be asked what is their preference yeah, conversation as opposed to, and yeah, they, as yeah. opposed to others who are not going to be doing this? Yeah, um, I don't think there's a reason that we could, couldn't have those conversations once we, chose the 10 artists and they part of the application, they provide their availability. So we could add a puzzle piece. And maybe once we have our orientation call, we can just throw that out to them and say, hey, you know, yep. what's your preference? Because to us, we just, you know, want to be helpful and have a space. And no matter what, we're going to have a space and people to help. So it's just a matter of putting people where they want to be. But yeah, awesome. I'll get feedback. Okay. Any other questions? No, and I loved how last year's rolled out. That was really a nice effect in that area. Yeah, it was it was very fun. So you you your crew is okay with me coming back with just the samples of the ten selected artists, and then you saying yeah, your yeah, your nay. Yeah, yeah the, we are not voting on this, are we, um, Lori? There's nothing really to vote. Are so you not voting on the artists right now? Um, but do you support the um, conceptual approval of the overall program? And then uh, Caitlin returning with the 10 artists that have been selected to actually do the work and to present examples of their work to the commission at that time, like, like happened last year. Yep. I agree to that personally. Um, Mary? Yes, Lisa? I agree to that as well. I agree. Me too. And Ryan. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. Thanks. And just one more plug. The application is on CodaWorks. If anyone wants to forward it out to any of their artist friends. Good. Good. Okay. Okay. Right. Before, before Caitlin goes, we do have an action requested, which is for conceptual placement approval. 
oh. and support oh, for the artist selection process. I'm sorry. Okay. Like yes. Um, motion for conceptual placement approval and support. Um, she will come back for the artist selection. Would you support their artist selection process for summer spray to temporary public art project proposed for the large open sidewalk on the north side of West Goodale Street between the High Street Cap over 5670 and North Park Street per code? A motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. 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 Okay. So All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks, Caitlin. Well done. Project <clears throat> number three. Okay. Uh, for number three, we have uh, the project called Sullivan Brighter Days. It's um, uh, the request is for final design and placement approval of uh, temporary pub of the temporary public art project, which consists of um, 10 to 15 um, uh, murals or drawings, um, two street murals and three chalk art pieces, I think word pieces. Uh, Amanda and Josh will go into that in detail. Um, the locations are pulled from, for this project are pulled from a plan that Designing Local has been working on with public service. It's still in draft. It, ha it will come to the commission at some point, um, but the locations are pulled from the larger plan, which is called Sullivan Bright. Um, and I think with that, who is going to take the lead? Amanda, are you? And oh, we also have Dan Waiten here from the Public Service Department. Okay. Can't forget Dan. <laughs> um, if it's okay with you, Lori, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Sure. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we have this is a this project is moving a moving target and moving quickly. So we have some updated slides from what we submitted to the commission. Can everybody see? Yes. Great. Um, Amanda, do you want to start us off? Sure. Hi, everyone. We're so excited to be in front of you again. We miss seeing you. Uh, and uh, we are really excited to present this plan. I didn't know, Dan, do you want to introduce yourself before we kind of get started on the art component and talk a little bit about the city's rehabilitation project and what it entails uh, that'll kind of set us up for how we uh, have been framing how this project is happening in two different phases? Yeah, sure. yeah, I could do that. Um, so, hi, I'm Dan Layton. I'm with the uh, Department of Public Service. Dan, uh, and, yes. sorry, um, can you swear to tell the truth today? Uh, you didn't get a chance oh. to swear in. I do. Very much. Thanks. Okay, go for it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm with the uh, Department of Public Service, Division of Design and Construction. Um, we have several components to a project that we're doing, an infrastructure project on Sullivan Avenue. Uh, this is between Hague and I-70. Um, one of the, uh, one of the, the components is uh, traffic signal work um, that, that we're working on the design of um, for construction later this year. So all the, there's five traffic signals within the corridor and those would be, be replaced. Uh, we do have so, an art component uh, related to that in this overall plan, which we can we can talk about um, that here in a bit. Um, there's also um, a pedestrian component to this project. So um, at the intersections between um, between Hague and 70. So really starting with Harris is the first intersection east of Hague. Um, we are looking to improve the pedestrian crossings um, at that the intersection. So we're working on, this is an infrastructure project to install um, curb extensions or bump outs at a lot of the intersections um, throughout that corridor. And those intersections were selected by our traffic management division um, based on um, origins and destinations, based on bus stops, based on pedestrian crashes um, that have occurred over time. So, um, so we'll be installing curb extensions at at those locations. We're also looking to install curb extensions um, for bus bulbs. Bus bulbs are um, essentially curb extensions
extensions into the pavement where that provides additional space for um, bus shelters um, and it provides additional pedestrian space. And what it does is also provides a traffic calming benefit as well um, in that it's, it's allowing the bus to stop within the, uh, the travel way. Um, so that's the pedestrian component. We also have a lighting project that we're doing um, and that, that will be going to construction later this year. So, um, so again, those are the kind of the two or the three components to our infrastructure work uh, that we're doing. And, and that would be, um, like I said, the, the lighting and the signal work will be going to construction here later this year and the um, pedestrian improvement project we're targeting next year uh, construction for that work. Um, so um, along those lines, I guess that's where we've developed this temporary project. Um, Amanda and Josh, do you want to kind of take it from, from there? Is there sure. anything else you want me to touch on before we start? No, that's perfect. No, that's great. So as Dan said, there is a significant amount of activity happening as it relates to pedestrian safety and traffic management along this corridor. And one of the ways that public service is thinking about illustrating what those permanent infrastructure improvements will be is through the application of public art directly onto the pavement, illustrating where those changes will be. So um, I think, Josh, the next slide kind of talks about how we're dividing the project into two phases. And, yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, so what we're really bringing forward to you today is phase one. Um, and, you know, just so everyone knows, kind of, I think we presented this, like, the very beginning stages of this plan last summer. Um, mm -hmm. And we kind of sat it down for a little while because, uh, you know, the city was working on, um, they were having their engineers design what the street is going to look like. Um, and so, you know, our component of it was not really moving forward at that time. Uh, and then after the beginning of the, this year, you know, Mayor um, Ginther has, he, he made this project a priority last year and is, you know, making this component a priority again this year. And so we have picked this up again and are really figuring out, we wanted to figure out how can we make, you know, tactical improvements to this corridor before we make those big construction changes. Um, and so I think the best way to illustrate this, because you guys were so involved in the high street project, is we're, the, the street is changing in similar ways to high, that high street did as part of that project, so getting those, those curb extension and bus bulbs. Um, and we're really marking out where those will be um, using some creative methods and using muralists and, and other artists. Um, and so that's really phase phase one of this project is how can we do tactical temporary things? We will come back to you in the future with phase two. We're not even think you know presenting that today because that is still being developed and and we're really this is a very fast moving um, project. So that's that's why we have this today. So we within phase one we've broken it down into three sub phases. One is what we're calling solvent brighter days. Um, and these are, this is really a week long installation of those temporary murals on the street. And we'll talk about that more. Um, then we also have phase 1B, which is two more permanent murals that are also going on the street. Um, but these are not in, these are like intended to last, um, you know, five to 10 years even. Um, and we do actually have renderings of those murals today that we are showing you. We also have a, a third um, phase, you know, sub phase to bring. Um, some uh, literary folks into this project as well. So we have um, hired some poets and we'll be talking about them and what exactly they're going to be doing as part of this program as well. So Amanda, you wanna start talking about um, phase 1A? Sure. So um, we have allocated the week of June 7th for this, what we're calling Sullivan Brighter Days. We want this to be something that is fun, that's happening. We're calling it Brighter Days. Um, it seems like it's an event, but it's really meant to just be a point in time where we are uh, installing these pieces of artwork. So um, we have 11 temporary street murals in the locations, and we actually 
at three o'clock, we just got back from a three hour meeting with public service where we actually walked the corridor and had cones set out in these locations to make sure that each of these locations is going to work with ADA accessibility and also pedestrian crossing. So we have just finalized these locations. Um, so we're going to have 11 of these temporary street murals placed in and along Sullivan Avenue on the south side in the eastbound lane. Um, some of them will be as large as a large bus bulb, and some of them are a little bit smaller and will just be curb extensions, which allow the pedestrian to spend less time actually crossing in the street and more time on what will be concrete. Um, these, the lifespan of these murals that we're applying directly to the, the asphalt have a lifespan of one year or less. They will be a, applied to the pavement on the week of June 7th. And then when the city starts construction, which will be as soon as the weather breaks in 2022 is when they will be removed. So these really are not meant to be anything other than uh, illustrating where those permanent pieces of infrastructure will go. Um, we have, when we began to think about this project, we originally were thinking about each piece being its own mural and having its own theme. And we thought, well, how about we think collectively about how all these pieces might fit together and be an entire experience? Because it's all about bringing color and brightness and joy to this corridor. So uh, we have decided that there is going to be a Roy Dubiff color scheme. So you're going to be going up a rainbow and then back down. Um, and that will go from Haig, which is on the far west side of the corridor, all the way, the last installation will be at Ryan, which is on the far east side of the corridor. So there's going to be this experience by both pedestrians, but also people in the car that can kind of see that, oh, well, we've got some kind of color scheme going here and it's not individual pieces. So, um, uh, so each location due to that color scheme is going to have a primary color and then some limited secondary colors that the artist can choose on their own. When we began reaching out to all of the different artists that we approached about uh, participating in Sullivan Brighter Days, part of the parameters that were given to them was, hey, this is what we're thinking. We want a rainbow color scheme. Do you have a specific color that you like to work with? And then um, our only rules were no words or depictions of humans, and it must be appropriate for all ages. Um, <clears throat> we, we have selected 12 artists and we have 11 locations and so um, that are finalized, but we're waiting to just figure out just a few more of those opportunities so that we can plug our 12th artist in uh, and, and that'll be kind of finalized on Friday. And it, because this is a moving project, when we originally submitted this, we, we had thought we were going to have up to 15 locations. Right. So we selected 12 artists, three of the artists or artist teams would do two. Um, in the case that if so if we have 12 ultimately each one will have one and we will we'll assign the artist that we are going to have to do two to the largest because some of these areas are almost twice the size of other ones right. so um you know we're we're going to right size it so we may just have those artists do that those larger ones um if if for some reason we end up only having 11 locations we're going to come up with another temporary project. So like maybe some, um, you know, some temporary wood, wood murals in vacant land bank lots. Um, but our intention is really to do this on the street. Um, and so we're really hoping, and I think we're very pushing very hard mm -hmm. to um, have this uh, 12th one so that we can do them all on the street. And Josh, before you move on, one of the things I want to just let everyone know is that traffic management and public service has been really wonderful in coordinating with us and making sure that every artist is one, going to be safe in the roadway and two, going to feel comfortable being on their hands and knees painting in the roadway. So um, they are actually starting installation of the the boundaries of each of these locations on Monday at 9 a.m. if you want to go see what that looks like. Uh, but they're actually doing two white lines around each of these locations and then reboundable posts are actually going to be placed within the two white lines. So there's going to be a 15 inch buffer uh, that essentially is acting as the boundary of the space that the artists are physically painting in. 
And then in addition to those reboundable posts and white lines, traffic management is also going to be setting up cones that are around um, each of the locations so that cars are not coming right up to those reboundable posts and then getting back in the lane. There will be plenty of space between where the cars are being directed into that north lane of the two lanes that are eastbound, if that makes sense. So there, there has been extreme care um, and extreme, um, just very careful eyes on everything that we're doing to make sure that everyone is safe. I also think it's worth noting, and I cannot overemphasize the fact that this is a huge, huge um, step for the public service department to um, not only allowing this to happen, but really driving this to happen. And I don't even think that this was necessarily the intention at the beginning of the project. Um, but when we, you know, facilitated a lot of discussions with the public service team, they really saw what this could do, not only for the, you know, safety of the street, but also to really do some of these fun tactical projects that we're seeing pop up all over the country. And there's tremendous excitement within the department and we're really trying to create this project and facilitate it as something that can be a model for other projects in the future if the city decided they wanted to wanted to do that um and we're all i think moving heaven and earth um on our team we definitely are and i know the city team is too um and so this it's it's really a big big step and a big deal that they're doing this you want to talk about the artist amanda Sure. So um, because the timeline, you know, was relatively quick, we have direct selected what are 12 artists. You see a list of 15 here, but again, that's because uh, when we originally submitted this application, we thought that there were 15 sites. So there are technically now 11 sites, but 12 total artists. So, um, and J Josh has actually slides for each person that you can look at, but each artist is receiving $1,250 stipend. The largest location, which the person who's, or people who are painting the largest location, it's only 700 square feet. And again, these are meant to be temporary and ephemeral and just done, you know, really relatively quickly. Um, they're not supposed to be super detailed. So um, the stipend will either be $1,250 or it'll be $2,500 uh, to add in the, I'm not good at math. Uh, Whatever that number is, yeah. <laughs> Whatever that number is. Uh, so those artists are going to receive double that for those uh, larger locations. But um, that does not include any of their supplies. The only thing they have to bring are their brushes. So we're, we're getting all the paint, everything will be out there for them, water, buckets, all the materials that they're going to need, and, um, you know, snacks and things that they might need while they're out there. It's branded gonna buffs. Yeah, we're, we're getting, getting some really awesome like branded buffs. Like headbands that can double us. It's going to be great. Uh, but we we direct selected all these artists. So Josh, you just want to kind of click through these? Yeah, yes, we will go through them. Um, I thought I had a note to add, and no, it has. Oh, uh, actually, no. What oh, we're going to go great. through first are sample images of what we're talking about, because um, as you probably know, Amanda and I are urban planners as well, and Dan is I don't know an engineer or something so that we're knows what we're talking here. about too. So we know that this is uh, this is a hard concept to grasp sometimes. So. We have some image to kind of show you what is in other cities. So this is a great one from Chicago. Yeah, though Arkansas. And, and again, you can kind of see those double white lines with the reboundable posts. Yes, yes. And there may be some things in these images that we are not doing. So just to be clear, these are only sample images. Um, And there are some really fun projects that we've seen, you know, and, and these projects, they do have a big impact. Some of these are probably just meant to be temporary, but it's really great that we're going to be able to show folks, uh, you know, what these improvements are going to be. Okay, here we go. On to the artists. Um, I, I think that a lot of these artists are folks that the commission will know or will have seen before. Um, and that's out of design because, you know, obviously, we wanted to work with artists that we know we could depend on. Um, and we also wanted to give opportunities to, to new folks as well, but uh, we tried to be really balanced in who we were reaching out to and, um, you know, again, looking at their artwork and knowing that they could deliver um, for this project since it is such a short time span. Mm -hmm. Yep, we've got April Tsunami, we've got Brian Anthony, Dylan Beck, 
You can just click their own Josh. Yep. Francesca Miller. It's Grace moving Grindosa. faster for me than it is for you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jen Rubles. We should talk sure. about this. Yeah, go um, ahead. So one group that we're working with, we have this as Jeremy Holland, but really we're working with Chris. So that's um, the Community Refugee and Immigration Services. And so I don't know if they've come to you before, but they actually, you know, have artists that they work with on their team. And then they facilitate um, young uh, refugees, immigrants, undocumented immigrants to come out and um, actually participate in their murals. So we're extremely excited that they're going to um, be doing this. So they, you know, they will actually have their kids out. Uh, and so they've done some murals elsewhere around town. And, um, you know, I think this is a huge opportunity for those kids to get involved and just really all the money that they take as artist fees goes back into their organization. So we're extremely pleased with um, being able to work with them. Got Katie Galanka, Mary Barksack, Nick Stoll and Liz Morrison, Robert Williams, and Stephanie Rond. I believe she's the last one on the list. Yes. And I'll let you take the street murals, Amanda. Okay, wonderful. In addition to um, those temporary murals that are illustrating where permanent infrastructure will go, uh, we are also here today to kind of present to you a couple of murals that are more permanent. Josh said five to 10 years, but it's actually five years or less. Sorry, five years. Yes. Um, it's five years or less, but these are murals that are not placed in locations along the roadway where cars are going to be driving over them often. So this is um, one location is actually in a pull through lane at Burroughs Elementary, which we'll show in just a second. And then the second is at the terminus of Whitethorn on the south, on the south side of Sullivan, but at the terminus of Whitethorn. Uh, and it actually is, is not in a lane of traffic. Um, it's at the T of an intersection, which we'll show here in a second. But uh, these locations are not locations that are going to get driven over, but they're on the street, they're on the asphalt. So they, I mean, this is going to be something that is not permanent as if we're putting that on um, concrete walls. So two artists were selected for those as well. The first is Sarah Dongolo Hout, and then the other is Amy Haggard. And they're, they vary in size. So the budgets for those are 5,000 for the larger mural that Sarah's doing, and then 3,000 for uh, the smaller mural that Amy is working on. And again, um, and the, Materials actually in this presentation are not included in the artist fee. Uh, that is a separate fee that we're covering for. So those are just their okay. artist fees. They're bringing brushes and we're providing all their materials. And you have the presentation before you. We don't have to go over um, Sarah's background, but we do want to show both of their proposals for the locations. Here are some of her, some of her work. You've seen it. It's beautiful. She's fantastic. Yeah. All of these artists are fantastic. But Sarah's work. Uh, because it's going in front of Burroughs Elementary is very playful, very bright, very colorful. And um, here are her two proposals. And I, I believe you have this material for you in a PDF so you can look closer at the images. Um, so when we originally sent this to you a week ago, um, we intended to, you know, have more of a discussion about which of these we would like to move forward with. Since that time, we I had a conversation with the principal of Burroughs Elementary, and she is thrilled about this project and about the potential for positive um, energy to come to, you know, towards Burroughs. They're the highest performing school on the west side, and they've had some negative press, um, you know, due to some of the issues on Sullivan Avenue. And so there, she was extremely excited to see this um, come before her. And actually, so the one on the right is what we're going to go with, but we're going to, it, it will change. And I'm gonna show a slide here momentarily about why. So the B is the Bros Elementary mascot. Um, and it's actually the centennial of Bros Elementary in 2021. They had large celebrations planned before this um, and you know before the pandemic. And unfortunately that just can't happen. So we're going to integrate the centennial into the mural. Uh, so this is a, a bit a quick sketch 
that the muralist provided us just uh, about what how it could be integrated into that. And I cannot, so we're gonna have a whole nother thing in a few slides about what we're doing with the school, but they are just really thrilled and they're going to help connect us with other folks in the neighborhood so we can let everybody know how, you know, this is going on, what's happening. And um, we're going to do some stuff with the kids too. So I'll talk about that more in a little bit, but we were extremely excited to hear that um, they were interested and that they want to participate. Um, and so now we'll move on to Amy. And you've likely seen her work as well. <laughs> it's also really wonderful. All of her work is about color. On her, you know, on her website, it's like my whole job as an artist is to bring joy to people. And so she was so excited about this opportunity. Again, this is at the terminus of Whitethorn, and it's gonna go just right where you see it in this rendering. And just a note, um, the the black you see is pavement. Yes. That was a question I had to Amanda when I first saw it. So just yeah. figured you might have to. So the last thing we're going to do is the words to live by. Um, so that's the, the the poetry where we're bringing poets in. So that's also going to be implemented the week of June 7th. Um, the poems, the poets are providing uh, their poems to us by I think May 24th. We're going to have those poems um, vetted and designed and um, cut into stencils. And those stencils will be um, will be able to do chalk paint throughout the um, project area. So we're going to apply these in areas where, particularly areas where there's not a lot of projects happening. So um, there are s segments where no bus bulbs um, or curb extensions are going. So that's those are likely areas we'll target with them. Um, we could reapply these with chalk paint because it does fade after around 90 days. Um, we have directed the poets to provide us poems that you know don't have any profanity they're uplifting they bring joy they're age appropriate for all ages and we have um said because we respect the you know the artists and their work that we will not be editing any of their poems we will of course have it signed off on by um public service because these are going into the street um, but there's not really any art review. It's just like a yes or no. And if it's a no for some crazy unforeseen reason, we will just have the poet provide a different poem to us. And we've told them they could provide us existing work or new work. And I think a lot of them are going to give us a blend of both. Um, and ultimately, we hope to use these in phase two as well. Uh, but we're still working through that. Um, we have asked Lisa to actually do the graphic design work for this. So um, she will be, so we've asked all the poets to actually write their um, poems out on a white sheet of paper and we'll be using their own handwriting um, if they want to, and I think all of them want to, um, to actually you know, design the stencil that way. And it's all gonna be laser cut. We're working with a laser cut uh, facility in Franklinton, which is also really exciting. Um, and each of the artists is getting a thousand dollar fee and the, they're providing us with two poems. Um, and we're just really excited to be able to bring not only kind of the positive energy we think that will come from this, but also to be able to bring uh, literary folks into a project like this. You know, they're not usually included. So, um, and th this is just some sample images I pulled of what I think this will ultimately look like. Um, the last kind of thing I wanted to talk about is what I mentioned earlier. So when I talked to uh, the Burroughs Elementary principal about this, she was extremely excited. She wanted to um, see if we could actually do this the week of in front of the school. So we'll put poems out throughout that week of June 7th uh, throughout the corridor, but around the school, we're going to be out there June 16th, my birthday actually. Um, and we're going to be putting the poems you know, around the school and they're gonna have that whole week um, at their school is going to be focused on poetry. And that, so we've already talked to some of the poets and um, Sarah, or um, yeah, Sarah, to um, the artist to come out um, and talk to the kids about what we're doing, why we're doing it, what poetry is, um, and help them a little bit with that. And then they're gonna do their own poems and sidewalk chalk. So we're super excited about that. 
Um, and you know, that kind of wraps that project up. <laughs> and lastly, I just want, <laughs> lastly, I did want to show you, because I know this is, you know, this was a big piece of what we were trying to do when we were direct selecting artists. Um, you know, it's, it is 68% of the artists are female. 32% of them are non-white, um, and that doesn't include Chris. Um, so obviously we'll be engaging with um, a very diverse group of um, young people from Chris. And while, as with anything else, we could always do you know better, but we feel like we're pretty well represented at this project. And you know we know that this is something that the commission always needs to think about moving forward. So I just wanted to make sure that we brought that up. Um, and with that, we will stop dumping on you and now take questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, as as usual, a very um, you know, very specific um, presentation. Thank you. I, I mean, personally, I just want to say that I'm really thrilled that the city is throwing in a two percent public art budget. I think that's fabulous, um, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, I also personally want to just say that the artists who have cho been chosen, um, their work is colorful and bold, and it just makes very it just makes perfect sense for this this project. I have a couple of questions, as you know, I would. Um, <laughs> I I had one of my questions answered that you had a pay scale for the street mural artists that was different, and I understand that your decision on that was because of the size of the mural. But I'm not. I, I would like to hear how you came up with the um, the payment for the 11 artists who will get 1250 and the word artists who will only get a thousand. How did you come up with that decision making process? That is a good question. You know, we were. Go ahead, Amanda. I'm sure you're going to answer the same way. No, you go ahead. So. Um, Originally, when we developed the full project concept, uh, the Bright Words to Live By was a project that we had allocated for the whole project, right? So, um, and and we also intended that it be um, something that only appeared when it rained. So when we shifted to thinking about how color could become a component of this, um, we said, you know, we had an allocated budget. The total budget for that is $7,000 just for that portion of the project um because it was always meant to be temporary and we said you know we need to pay specific artists we want to, we want as many artists as possible to be involved we want to give the artists the opportunity to either give original or existing work um and we have we have seven thousand dollars allocated for this project we want five artists and so we have two thousand dollars left to order supplies and then pay our graphic designer um and that's just kind of how we landed on that okay I, it just, <clears throat> it was obvious to me that the word artists were getting less. And so I guess I, I kind of wanted to know why there wasn't parity. Um, just, I think that's, that's a, that's a, that's fair. a fair, total fair point, Diane. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, because we're so deep in it, I don't know that we looked at it that way, but I, I, you're not wrong. Right. Okay. With the will the word artists um, as well as the other artists have uh, name recognition. Yes, they will. We're on their Absolutely. project. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks. also, I don't do you think have we questions? mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane. I just wanted to add that we have hired a photographer and a videographer to to document the process, um, and every single artist is getting access to the original files and they can use them as they want and they'll be candid shots and also final shots of their final work and they will be professionally done so um we hope that that's something that the artists also are excited to receive and uh we haven't talked about this either but one of the things that you know we may consider with the particularly with the literary artists is like having a you know like a tag or something if they want their instagram handle or something on that that's something i think that that has already been in my mind but uh we just haven't talked about that yet but i know that's a good way that they can like people can get recognition of them out on the street um so we'll, we'll look for more ways to do that too i the other thing i want to add there is amanda will yell at me for saying this but there's lots of ideas of how we could engage with these same folks 
after the project is over, particularly the literary folks, but we have to execute the project first and then see what we can do. <laughs> okay. Um, how about uh, other commissioners? Do you have questions of Josh and Amanda? I don't have any questions, but I just want to say I was so excited when I saw you included word artists with the project. I just, I don't know whose idea that was, but thank you. Okay. Josh, well, saying, yes. <laughs> it was probably Amanda. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let me read the action requested and well, if there are other questions to be asked, um, we, I'm, I'm looking for a motion for final placement approval of the temporary art projects locate project locations and final approval of the selected artists listed in the applicant materials and, ex and presented today, creating extemporary extemporaneous artwork in those locations and um, included in the application materials for code. May I have a motion? I make a motion to approve Marine here. Second. Um, I'm sorry, I, I just dawned on me. Lisa, you're um, being paid by sorry. designing right. local. I to do it. the uh, graphics, so you'll need to um, abstain. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Oh. She okay. knew that. We discussed it. So I'll I'll second for Lisa. Apologize, I forgot that. Okay. I got that. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, the three of us, I approve. Mary, uh, I. Marine. Yes. Marine, did I hear you say yes? Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Design Local. Appreciate your Thank work. You. Once we have the final schedule, I will send that to Lori so she can send it to all of you. We are going to have a tent at one of the lots the city owns that the artists are able to come and take a break in, have snacks, get their paint and supplies. We would love to have you join us. Everyone will be required to be masked at the tent, but we would love to have you join us if you so choose. We would welcome you uh, and we'd love to show you around uh, what's going on in Sullivan. So cool. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful evening. Good to see you. Good to see y'all too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So moving along, we've got three more projects. So, Lori, yeah, um, this is a this is an anomaly. This is the Pearl Street temporary mural banner. Um, Lewis will have the images up in a minute, I think. Um, it's it's weird because the the advice that I've had from the city attorney's office is that if the art doesn't need a right of way permit. You know, like um, urban scrawl uh, that Franklinton uh, used to hold uh, regularly. Those panels, a lot of times in Franklinton, would be affixed to the exterior of buildings on streets. Um, but because they were affixed on the actual property, uh, they didn't need a uh, right of way permit. And I sought some advice from the city attorney's office, and they said no, that that would not require um, art commission approval. It's on the building, there's no right of way permit, so we wouldn't need that extra step. Now, this one is odd because um, most of you know where uh, Pearl Street or Pearl Alley is located. The um, the Sid downtown runs the um, Pearl Street Market uh, two days a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and they wanted to put up a, a temporary um, art banner, a mural. And so you can see those poles that um, the light poles and um, this project ended up not needing a um, right of way permit, oddly enough, because the poles aren't part of the city of Columbus's um, inventory. These are private poles, I think maybe through AEP. Um, and I don't know how they came up with this decision, but they decided that no right of way permit was necessary. Um, and then advised the um, uh, coordinator, Sam Sharkey, who couldn't be here, um, that she probably would need um, approval of the art commission. And at first, my stance was the city's opinion, city attorney's office opinion that no, 
Um, we wouldn't if there's no um, right of way permit, but you can clearly see that the poles are in the right of way. They're in the alley so that the mural itself is in the alley. So, although I wasn't quite as clear when I sent my um, information out to you and wrote up my um, piece for the agenda, um, I think it is appropriate that, that it is before the commission for your review. So, essentially, um, the, if you could go down to a little bit to the artist image, Lewis. Uh, one more time. So the artist is Freddie Crocheron. I may be mispronouncing his name. I'm not sure. Um, and this was the image that he submitted that the, um, the CID and um, the small group that they put together to look at the mural designs that were submitted to them. Um, again, it's a temporary piece. And if you could go down again, Lewis, to Freddie's uh, example of other artworks. Um, he may actually have um, have completed this, and uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't sure from my conversations with Sam, but if we could go back up to the budget now, back one. Um, down a little bit for me. <laughs> On that, on the page with the budget, I just need to look at that. Okay, great. So, um, I think that the, um, the SID is supplying the, um, budget to the artist and I don't have the full amount that they're paying the artist, uh, to, uh, have the materials and to complete the artwork. Um, so $400 for the artist to complete the, um, uh, the materials part of it and the artists um, uh, offered to do the work pro bono. So, uh, you know, in this particular case, the artist just wanted the work to be seen, uh, which isn't usually how things come to the art commission. But um, if you'd like to look at the image of the art again, would you like to see that again? Yes. Okay. Should we go back to that? Lewis showing the image between the two poles. Yep, there we go. Thank you. Um, again, this is temporary. It will be up from um, mid June to October, and then they will take it down and um, perhaps look for a new banner the next year. So they're just trying something new this year. So I'll do my best with questions that you have. I thought that Sam would be attending, but she isn't here. So. Commissioners, do you have questions? I, I guess it, it, since it's um, it, since it has come for us, uh, come to us. Um, my question would be: um, It looks like it's safe, um, but it's not on our on city property. Um, our action requested is final design and placement approval of the temporary mural banner by artists between the private light poles at 47 North Pearl Street per code. Um, so I'll um, take a motion. I so move. Okay, second. I can second this one. Right? <laughs> you can. Are I there questions? Second. I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, it, it's very I'm, awkward, I guess. Um, but uh, shall we vote for this motion for this uh, art to be displayed on Pearl Alley? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sure. Sure. Yeah. What, um, I do have a question. What's the timeline of displaying this one piece all year? It's all, yeah, well, all market it's not season, the year, right? It's the market. Um, it's when the market is running. So it's like mid June through about October 10th. Okay. The market uh, outdoor market 
um, ceases on October 10th. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, I guess we'll move on to the restoration project. Yeah, uh, you may remember this. It came to you 13 years ago um, by the Tuttle Park Community, um, I forget how they do it, it's the Community Recreation right. Council. Um, so we're just gonna slowly go through the images if you could, Lewis. Um, is this the Damon Day mural? No, this isn't the Damon Day mural. This is Andrew Kern's mural that was paid for by the Recreation Council. They make a good amount of chunk of change from parking people for football games. And you can see where the wall's kind of flaking and spalling in places. Um, so the council went to Andrew Kern and asked him to give a budget for um, coming in and, re and restoring the mural. They like the mural and they want to keep it. And um, I believe $7,680 is the fee that Andrew is charging to come in with his materials to cover everything to um, work on uh, restoration uh, for six weeks. I'd like to also mention that there's a lot of work happening on the grounds at Tuttle Park. Um, there's um, uh, playing fields, um, tennis courts, and a portion of the fields will be turned into a skateboard park. And that work is going to be happening this summer. So what the Recreation Council wanted to do was, while this area was closed off, to the public for the most part, take that opportunity to have Andrew come in and basically uh, restore the mural. The way the code is written, um, you are asked to review, consider, and recommend on the conservation of art subject to commission approval as provided in section 3115.04G, but you're not, um, it doesn't stipulate that you need to approve that um, restoration work. Um, so really what we're looking for is your support for having the Recreation Council contract with Andrew and come out and really clean this mural up and um, fix the wall in places. Um, I'm sure Recreation and Parks might have some involvement with the wall itself. As you can see, this is a great picture to see where it's not just the paint flaking off, but the wall is falling in some places. So there needs to be some repair to the wall as well as to the art itself. And where the cursor is on the screen is my pet peeve. Um, I think there needs to be an apostrophe there. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but Three. it's, um, can you show the one where it's got the full text, um, Lewis? It's Midwest largest growing secret. Midwest. It needs an apostrophe. Yeah. <laughs> and I have that's for 18 years, so 13 years, wanted to go out with a white, you know, thing of paint and a paintbrush and just put a little apostrophe on there. Yep. Yep. So yep. I can add some feedback that they might want to add that to the art when they're doing the restoration. If I agree. Supportive of that. <laughs> so what do you think? Is this something that uh, the motion again, the action is uh, I mean, the, the um, art commission to review? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Diane, I'm taking your job. I'm reading the motion. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> um, no, it's fine. It, it, uh, I'm always in support of having the work restored, so I appreciate that that's happening. Um, can I ask uh, other questions from the commissioners? For it looks like, sorry. It looks like Marine here. It looks like Sam is here. So I don't know if there was any additional information, Sam, that you may want to share about the project. For the Pearl Market project? Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. I'm still. Yeah, other projects. <laughs> yeah, no, that was approved by the Art yep. Commission. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, Thank you all thank very you. much for your consideration and that unusual circumstance. And thank you for being so kind, even though I was late. <laughs> Take care. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, then I will have a motion for um, supporting the proposed restoration of Andrew Kern's mural at Tuttle Park for code. 
Motion. I move. Second. Mary. I can second. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I can't I, always. I, everybody's taking turns. Brian, yeah. you're up. Yeah. <laughs> second. All those, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any, um, Laurie, is there any information around like the longevity of this restoration? Like, do you know if this, if the intention around restoring this mural is that it's good for another five years or 10 years or? Good question. I'm sure they're looking for another at least 10 years. Um, I can ask Joe Modal. I, mean, I think part of why it, um, it started flaking and falling is the wall and there might have been something with either the preparation of the wall or a condition of the wall to cause that to happen because we have murals that have been up for a really long time. It um, used to be a wall that you could use to play tennis by yourself. And I know mm -hmm. I used it for that. I live near Tuttle. <laughs> and so, so that might have something to do with the condition. Still hitting it. Okay. Yeah. That could be. That could be. Marine's forehand. <laughs> I'm going to use some of that those. super sealer on it. Yeah. I'm not sure when William sealer. Mm -hmm. They yeah. did the last time, um, but I don't think that they used the um, the more expensive one. I think they used the sacrificial sealer because the you know the the one that GCAC is using is great, but it's really expensive. And it was like yes, kind it of is. Their budget, but they do always enter into uh, their contract, or they did last time with Andrew, and I'm sure they'll do it again because he's a local artist. That if there's graffiti or anything that happens, that he would come out and he would um, repair that. Great. That's what they did the first time. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to the final project, Lori. Yeah, um, this is very exciting. It's cabinet wrap, everyone. Um, Lewis, if we could have the uh, images. So this is really part of the Art on High project. This um, this traffic cabinet is big. It probably comes just below my shoulder, and I'm about five eight, five eight and a half. And um, you know, Mark uh, Riegelman, the artist for um, Art on High, the Maker's Monument, and I have been really befuddled by this and annoyed by it. But you know, it has a job to do, and it's not going anywhere. It's where all the mechanics are for the traffic lights at that intersection. Um, so we've been going back and forth for a year and a half or more, trying to figure out what we could do to try and help disappear the cabinet. So if we could move on to the next two slides, Lewis. Um, we bounced around some different ideas and we ended up with this wrap um, pattern. See if we go down one more. That's taking from the uh, retaining wall that sits, um, you know, the parking lot for Greystone, um, the stone that's in that retaining wall and in the columns at the edge of the retaining wall. Um, again, what we're trying to do is tone down the appearance of the cabinet, disappear it as much as we can, even though we know it's never going to be completely gone, but to try and make it a little less of um, an eyesore so close to the public art piece that's going to be installed soon. So you can see a little bit behind um, to the right how the cabinet wrap kind of matches up with that column of stone, or excuse me, on the left, matches up with that column of stone. And um, Mark also considered bringing in some coloring from the stone that um, the Greystone apartment building is um, constructed of. So if you could go to the other images. Um, right now I have um, the images um, with the Department of Public Services, the traffic safety folks who are in charge of the cabinet, they need to approve this. And then we need to get a right of way permit when the work is actually done. Um, interestingly enough, the company that the city of Columbus always um, advises people use, the ones who did the um, cabinet wraps in Clintonville in the university district, mm -hmm. 
They're called Clean Slate Group. They're out of Bozeman, Montana. Um, they did a great job, I think, with the university and Clintonville cabinet wraps. Um, and the city does have a preference for this group. Um, Mark also dug up a company in Cleveland called West Camp. And what we found is that it was more expensive for us to go through West Camp than it would be to go through the group out of Bozeman. So to get the cabinet wrap uh, taken care of and we have money in the budget as we establish, reestablish a contingency, um, it'll be between $2,215 and $2,600. It just depends on how much prep work they have to do to the cabinet when they get out there, but it's a pretty new cabinet. So I think that that will be minimum. Um, they'll have to fly someone out. And once someone's here and they finish the prep work, it takes about an hour and a half to actually wrap the cabinet, the wow. um, sides and the top of the cabinet. So do you guys have any questions for me? I do. Um, this is Lisa. What is there a mock up with in proximity to the large sculpture that's going to be here? I wondered that no, too. No, I don't have one of that. Sorry. It yeah. Like okay. So if we can look at this, the, the sculpture, you see where those two trees are? Um, yeah. Not the one closest to the cabinet, but the two furthest away. Those have been taken out for the sculpture. And the sculpture is going to be back in that in that area. Um, I didn't think to ask Mark for that. I should have. Um, he's so detailed. I'm sure he looked at that and found it, um, you know, that it, it met, meets his standards. Uh, but that is, a, that is a good question. So he is aware that it is there. Yeah, oh yeah, he is oh. very detailed. He, oh, that's perfect. I, I had to look at, or he asked me to look at um, like eight different wrap stone patterns um, with some different colorations as he was kind of working this out. He's very, very detailed. So um, this was the stone coloration and sort of the texture images that he felt best about. I went out and took a bunch of pictures of the cabinet itself, a ton of pictures of the retaining wall and um, then he got some additional pictures of uh, the apartment building. Great. But again, it, it, I'm, it's not my favorite thing to wrap a cabinet with, but it does tone down the stainless steel. Yes. Um, it takes a little bit of a bite out of looking at that shiny stainless steel that will be, it won't blend in with the stainless steel of the art piece. I have another question. Um, sure. Will how long is this slated to be able to last? Like, how does it fade? Is it UV protected? Will it be rewrapped over a period of time? It's a few questions. They last a really long time unless someone cuts it. It's got a graffiti coating that's part of the material that it's made of. So it can be cleaned off repeatedly. Um, so it's not sacrificial. Uh, if someone runs into the cabinet, that does happen. Um, hopefully it doesn't because it's a little too close to the artwork for my comfort, but um, it's near an intersection. That's usually what happens and the damage that happens to these. Not so much someone coming and nicking it and peeling it. I mean, that is possible, but it hasn't been a problem in the University of Clintonville yet. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem at all. Just more yeah, how it is. Yeah. So, so like, Lori, the, just to be clear, the artist wanted this wrapping, yeah? Yeah, he designed this. Oh, okay. It, it just, yeah, like, he came to up me, it's like, then it becomes a little more puzzling because of the wrapping that it becomes something else, right? And then one might start to wonder, is that part of the artwork? You know, as opposed to maybe if it was painted, for example, in a gray color, just dulled, then I think it would be less of a question. But but if Mark thinks this is the right solution. It feels kind of classic. And I, I'm with you, Marina. I, I did worry about that, but I feel like a solid color looks more out of place than this stone column. I, I just I even look at these and I question, I think, wow, this is an artwork, right? <laughs> you know, because it has been treated in a very specific way. Um, and then, yeah, that's just how my brain works. Depending on the time of day. It won't since, disappear. Next to the sculpture, since, I think it'll disappear. Yeah. Sorry. Since Mark 
you know, that the box was bothering him and he came up with this solution and he feels comfortable with it. Um, I don't know. I feel comfortable with it. I would, uh, like Lisa had suggested, I would love to have seen this incorporated into the piece. I'm not sure I would have changed my mind, but I, you know, be interesting to see the distance. Maybe it will look totally unrelated because it's further enough away. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I could ask him to um, do something in Photoshop, and then I could, yeah, I could circulate it to you all if that would. Um, and again, not that it'll matter, never but thought about it that way. Well, that's I mean, right. we, we've, I mean, obviously he's looking at it much more contextually um, than I was initially. Like this thing is ugly. We need to try and disappear it a little bit. How can we do that? That's you know, good. talked about turning it the color of the sidewalk. Talked about maybe using it for information about the artwork. And Mark felt that that just brought too much attention to it. Hmm. Um, and this was the approach that he felt the most comfortable with. Okay. Um, I think of the, yeah, I'm okay with it. And I, the ones in Clintonville are really well done. They are. So, I'm so happy with those. <laughs> it makes me smile when we walk by. See, but they're, they're artworks, right? So once your brain's trained to see that you're going to think oh this is an artwork and then you know there's this other sculpture right near and you're thinking oh it's part of it and then you know. i don't know that it's part of it because i think it will be it, it could be helpful to look at a photoshop but it blends in so well with the graystone that i, I i'm it looks like it's contextual and that's yeah to me if i was walking by it looks like the graystone chose to do that because it's an eyesore not necessarily the artist it's especially if we're looking at it from the other side, uh, you'll see that a better shot of the retaining wall, and then it really blend, it blended in mm -hmm. to my eye. Uh, this is me, this is the, the kind of conceptual work that I might make. That's why I'm responding to. Oh, you. Right. it is art. It is uh -huh. art. Got uh -huh. it. We'll be looking for those little. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, so um, do we have to approve it? Yes. Yes. I need okay, I, uh, I'll take a motion for final design and placement approval of the cabinet wrap proposed for placement on the large utility cabinet located in the northwest corner of North High and West Hubbard per code. I so move the motion. Whose turn? I'll second. <laughs> My turn. That was Lisa. Lisa seconded. I I, I ended. I, I, I third. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. If Mark wants this, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the big. Yeah, I, I think that makes the most it's, sense. It's been really interesting. The um, smaller things that have become bigger, almost kind of annoying niggling things that have had to be addressed as we're kind of getting toward the finish line and putting the piece in. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's going back out to um, Arizona, I think next week to take another look at the piece. And Bollinger, you know, from what Marcus said, they're thrilled with it. They've not done anything like this piece before. They think it's a really original take on, um, you know, working with stainless steel. And yeah, I think everyone's going to be pretty happy when they see it. I've, I'm excited. I can't wait. You know, a lot of good work coming up yeah. this summer. Yeah. 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 So, so you want to yeah. do a quick review of that trauma yeah, informed pick up placemaking? Um, I sent out some update information to all of you. Um, I mentioned, um, I don't know, one or two meetings ago that, um, you know, we're getting, it used to be the CARES Act and now it's like Community Recovery um, Act funds or I don't remember the acronym um, for the new federal money that's coming to Columbus uh, because of COVID-19, the pandemic. So um, <clears throat> just to quickly recap, I've been kind of burning um, everyone's ear about, you know, we need to offer artists opportunities to do their work and be paid for it as opposed to just trying to find grant money to help them over, um, you know, the pandemic drying up a lot of their jobs. And um, 
you know, what was nice about this is it was very organic. I was sort of talking about that and that artists may work with art, um, youth. And then the director of the department, Mike Stevens, said, well, what about youth employment? And then it sort of rolled from that into other discussions with, you know, Central Community House and Transit Arts and can't go into a lot of details yet, but I think we're going to have something happening this summer. Um, there'll be funding um, to get some, um, a smaller version of what we had thought about with artists working with um, youth uh, and the youth being paid and the artists being paid um, to do some interesting stuff this summer within the community. Um, I think possibly um, broadening that out after, you know, we kind of get it off the ground this summer, um, carrying some pieces of it over into the fall and then in the spring gearing up for summer with a, with a bigger, with a bigger program more artists, more, more youth, more projects. So, you know, the director um, is really excited about it. The department's excited about it and uh, we're working to get legislation to council and more will be known about it at that time, working on the contracts that will be happening. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm really happy about that. Um, the Christopher Columbus statue, Lewis, could you pull up the um, uh, presentation that we had at the last Christopher Columbus statue committee meeting? And Diane, I can't remember the date of that. Was it the 13th or 11th? Um, I think it was the 13th. Okay. So, oh, Maybe. Diane, did you want to share that or the roster of who's participating in that first? Um, it wouldn't be, I, I think it would be a good idea to do the roster real quickly. Okay. There you go. Eliza and Marine are uh, working on this committee with me. And, um, but I think the others are important for you guys to see. Real quickly, um, um, we've had two meetings. Um, thanks. And and what I thought I would do to make it um, fairly quick is um, is to talk about the framework that the committee approved. We're nowhere near really um, an end to this committee um, meeting. Um, Lewis, would you mind looking at the, um, the PowerPoint? Okay, and move to the next. This is what um, Lori created for them on the second meeting so that they really understood what our role is, the commission's role. It was a, a little unclear after the first meeting. So um, we wanted to explain to them again what the art commission is as opposed to the statute committee um you know this so let's go to the next slide um the next one actually yeah no nope. next so we wanted to also remind them of their charge um they are there at our request, your your request. Um, we're to consider the disposition of the Christopher Columbus, but not necessarily the actual site to uh, for it. Um, we're trying to work them into talking about context and a curatorial narrative. Um, um, there is some discussion about remaining in storage or placing it in a new community location. Um, th that's a very touchy discussion that hasn't truly been voted on. Um, I, I think it's important for them to advise on site conditions for the statue if it's installed in a new location um, and then they will file a report for your review. The next slide. This is the framework that we we finally agreed on. So um, I'm very happy <laughs> with this. Um, we as a group needed to um, agree and understand that the um, <clears throat> that this Christopher Columbus statue will not be dismantled. It is in storage. 
It will not be given away. It's part of the city's art collection, even if it stays in storage or is installed in a new location. It won't return to City Hall or be placed in the downtown campus. And the issues that tend to be the ones we talk about the most are those that transcend the physical structure. Um, and currently there are two, I don't know if I should call them factions or two um, kind of concepts that are um, discussed often. And a couple of, I think probably several people are going to be taking those discussions into um, their own so that they will be kind of a, not a subcommittee, but they're going to be talking about their, um, their interests or actually they're trying to get an understanding of where they stand outside this committee meeting and then bring it back to us next month when we meet. Um, I think it, it, those issues primarily come down to being cultural. And then is there another slide? I don't remember. What I'd love to see, and I hope we can get there, is to just to have this committee agree that there are certain factual historical issues. There's a timeline of how that sculpture came about. Um, it was dedicated and the timeline of how it and when it was a visual symbol of the city of Columbus. There's some discussion about whether it still is or not. Then culturally, um, it's important to recognize that it was a gift of Genoa to us. Um, there's a sister city relationship to deal with and the position and concern of the indigenous community and the immigration experience um, still need to be really vetted and discussed in a broad context. So thanks for letting me report to you on uh, where we are. Yeah, we do have another um, aspect and that's the educational role. Um, and those educational points we hope will follow the piece wherever it lands. I have a question. Yeah. So I have people, you know, friends uh, that know I'm on the commission. I got a lot of questions as to where is the statue and what's going to happen to it? So what would you, what's the answer that would be best? What question? Well, it's currently and in it storage, is in storage. In the city I know facility. that much. It's okay. in a, um, it's in a temperature col um, controlled location. It was placed there by conservator, um, you know, um, assistance, McKay Lodge was part mm -hmm. of the removal and the storage of the piece. Mm -hmm. And that's where it is until, you know, there's there's some decision recommendation. So the the Christopher Columbus Statue Committee will make a recommend make a recommendation or recommendations okay. to the Art Commission, which will then review those, perhaps add some of their own, um, support um, all part of, you know, uh, the recommendations of the committee. And ultimately, all of this will end up with the administration and the mayor's office um, for them, for the mayor to Great. decide um, what okay. to do. So um, it's not up to the commission to figure out, the art commission to figure out, okay, we have these recommendations now, where are we going to put it? You know, that really has to come right. to the mayor's office. Um, yeah. I think okay. one other thing, if I could add, Diane, is, um, um, you know, we were in the middle, middle of the pandemic when I was trying to find committee members and um, didn't have a lot of success finding anyone from the indigenous community to participate in this process. Um, I did find Dan Montour, who is excellent. Um, I don't remember, I can't pronounce the name of the tribe that he belongs to in Canada, but he works at Ohio State University in um, their international affairs office. He's very um, involved and engaged with the indigenous community here in Columbus and really, I think, regionally and um, up in Canada. And um, there's been a lot more interest since this process started and Dan started talking to people about it. And so a request was made to add some additional panel members um, from the indigenous community. Um, and the, the committee, um, 
seemed supportive of that. And so I'm talking with the director and he with the mayor's office about um, adding some more members um, to the committee. Apparently folks have been picking up on the, the meetings through YouTube so they would be up to speed with what's happened so far. And Dan is going to be providing a list of potential um, uh, people who could be um, considered for, you know, one of those probably at least two additional positions, uh, two to three additional positions on the committee. So that's something else that's happening. And, and Marion and uh, Eliza and Lori and I have spoken um, together. It, it's important to us, if I may say so, Marion, to make sure that this isn't a um, just a polar opposite problem, um, because there are many people who have a uh, an issue or a problem with Columbus or. Um, you know, whether they're residents or um, culturally upset about the myth of Columbus. Um, and this is not just a singular issue. And we have a sister city relationship to worry about. So um, we, we like the idea that it's going to broaden and I'm trying very hard to make sure that this is about um, all immigrant experience, not just one or two people. people. It's, and you, I love how you summarized that, Diane. I think it's exactly true. And I think this has come up in the meetings as well. It's really about the question of representation. <laughs> and ultimately then, if, if and when the statue were to go out on public display again, you know, how do we provide context? And, and maybe make it part of a social justice kind of larger, you know, initiative. Absolutely. Yeah. Marine's also been really good about um, recognizing that we're sort of chicken and egg. Um, <laughs> there are so many things that come up that we would love to, it, that might be um, elucidated once we have a new piece, but we can't get there yet. We don't have the money. We don't have the time. We need an artist's involvement. I mean, really, artists should be involved in this, but we need to be going through the process to get an artist or an artist team before we do this. So um, anybody who wants to join in on this committee, <laughs> you are welcome. Um, but you're also welcome to um, you know, review the YouTubes and let us know, bring it forth to this commission meeting uh, or our business meeting, should you want to discuss it further. Great. Okay. Um, Lori? Um, I just want to go over really quickly again, um, important dates, I think, for us. The installation, actually, federal and construction should be out right now. Um, excavating to put the foundation in for um, the public art piece, uh, Mark Riggleman's public art piece. After it having the name uh, Columbus Crystals, the Maker's Monument, he has, he has decided the name of the piece is going to formally be the Maker's Monument. <clears throat> so that's how it will be referred to, which I think is great. Um, and um, we're tentatively looking at the dedication on August 7th. If you could just kind of pencil that into your agenda, it was in the email I sent, but August 7th. Um, working with the SNA, as you know, the city, you know, we have a AAA bond rating, but I couldn't buy you a cup of coffee with city money. Um, so the SNA is kind of helping us and taking the lead of um, the idea of having kind of a community celebration during the afternoon, during the gallery hop. And then there might be something that's um, followed up later uh, in one of the businesses it's a little bit smaller, but um, that's all that could change. Um, we're also trying to find out if the mayor's available and if, if he would be able to come and um, say a few words. Um, so I think the only other thing that I would want to add is um, cats chewing on my paper. Um, the only other thing I'd want to add is that the director has given us a green light for using some funds that are available right now 
to start putting together, <clears throat> excuse me, the RFP to um, do a consultant call to work on an art plan for um, City Hall downtown campus leading toward the new public art piece. Right. And um, we're trying to make sure that we include in that the funds to move on to the artist call. Then once we are, you know, getting toward the end of that, initiating the artist call, then we'll look for the additional funds to actually um, pay for the piece. But um, the same funds that we're using for the plan could be used for at least partially to pay for the piece. So that's good news. And the other really good news I'm relieved about is that um, the pieces that were on the riverfront, the children's park, the little animal pieces, Mr. Tibor's piece, Freedom, um, they were in need of restoration before they were placed in storage for the site of mile um, project. And then they were returned and I've been trying to get funding to get those restored. They're over behind the federal courthouse at the north end of set a mile kind of downtown. Um, and he's approved my um, adding pictures and, you know, just sort of wrapping up the RFP and getting that out this summer. So, um, that I'm really happy about. I don't know how much it's going to cost. I mean, I think it was probably like a, a 60, 50, $60,000 project at one point, but, um, you know, they've been out there for several years without any protective coating on them. So I don't know. I have to go down and look and see and take pictures just to get an idea of, um, you know, the condition they are now. So right. that's it for me. Lori, how much money are we looking at for the plan? What did you, uh, well, I used as um, the reference that we um, paid designing local $81,000 for the art on okay. high plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the reason why it was that expensive is that we really wanted a strong um, community involvement component. We okay. want the same with this plan. So mm -hmm. I've, I'm looking at, I mean, I don't know what people will come back with. But you know we're probably looking at 150, possibly 200 thousand yeah. dollars to do that. Just kind of yep. apples yeah. and oranges. But that's yep. the best relationship we have. Um, and then keeping, I think, maybe 50 thousand dollars for the artist call to pay for, um, you know, having the artists come uh, that are, you know, the the finalists come to the city, pay them to mm -hmm. do their proposals. The, travel and all that stuff is where that starts to get expensive pretty quickly. So Fantastic. yeah, this is a good thing. It kind of reorders stuff sure. a little bit, I think, but, um, you know, I'm just happy for the forward momentum. Yeah. While I'm thinking of it, um, with that RMP, I've been thinking a lot about this lately. And I just want to throw it out there. Um, I think that the idea of um, of um, monuments and memorials and have not been really kept up in time in the city. So there's a lot of misunderstanding about statuary, <laughs> um, figurative work, what memorials are, you know, that kind of thing. And we are talking about a permanent piece for the, you know, the Christopher Columbus um, replacement. And if there is a possibility, maybe in the RFP, for there to be some sort of um, educational component so that we can start to bring the public along with what, it, you know, we have so many great uh, temporary art pieces in the city and the permanent art pieces are not necessarily, um, they, they may be abstract or whatever, but you know, the jump to replace Christopher Columbus is a big is a big educational jump as well as a big financial investment. And it whatever we can do to bring the public along with what public art looks like now in other places, um, because we as a city have not brought it along it would be really handy if we could have maybe uh, something within that RFP, some kind of educational component that kind of shows what artists are now looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the time to be talking about that. So jot down your ideas as they come to you and just start sending them to me. I'll start putting them together. 
you know, I don't know who started us with this, but Monument Lab, um, their field trip piece Monument that they did beyond. looking at monuments, um, yeah. that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I don't know that we do the same thing, but I think that that's something that we could look at and say, you know, this is a good kind of community participatory way of being involved. Um, so, you know, thinking on, on that line. And then the other thing too is I put off going forward with the market study approach, you know, the the survey, not market study, but the survey, community survey. Um okay. until I had a better understanding of what was happening with the actual public art and um the city symbols um uh work. And I think that we need to try and a little bit of that into this with having that kind of survey um, happening as a part of this process. So if we can have different kind of tracks of things that appeal to different people um, yeah. or, you know, more people, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. Lisa? Um, I um, have been thinking about the edu educational aspect, but I love what you're saying, Diane. If we're leading with the educational aspect for the city, maybe it's a campaign, then we kick off all of the study and the focus groups and the discussions and all of that. That makes perfect sense to frame it up for everybody. Okay. All right, thanks you guys. Thanks very, very much for taking time to be here today. And I always Absolutely. appreciate what you say. Okay. Um, can I just tell you something? Uh, June 9th, Dan and I are returning from the Adirondacks and I don't know, I mean, we will be in our car. I will, uh, I guess I can certainly try to be on. I just don't know if I'll have Wi-Fi. Well, you try but real hard. I'm going to. <laughs> find a great trip. Find a What's that? I said have a great trip. It oh, great. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just the concept of a vacation and like leaving state or you know, going over the state line is whoa. That's exciting. I'm so crazy. <laughs> Just find a Starbucks. Friends. All right. Thanks, 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 yeah. Thanks Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lewis. So Thank we're adjourned, Diane. Are you? I think so. Diane All right. froze. Uh, all right. So, Thank you. Okay. Bye. I think yes. we're all adjourned. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Good to see Bye, everybody. everybody. Good to see you. Bye. We're adjourned. <laughs> Bye, Diane. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>